Today, I want to learn more about the running backs and the running game at Penn State. In your latest video, you talked about the two Penn State freshman running backs. That's Nick Singleton and Catron Allen. We fans are really excited about them. Give me your impression of the two. Well, you know, I would say that, you know, in the video I made it very clear. I think Catron is probably the more polished back. Um, he's definitely a guy who, you know, he could tell he's been in a system where he was had to read zone game. He had to you know, be really patient in his runs. Um, you can tell that Nick, on the other hand, was definitely a veer running back option. You know, he hit the hole hard as he could. He runs. Um, you know, I, I think they're both exceptional athletes. You know, I think Catron's probably the more polished, but I think the ceiling – or our man Nick is way higher just because of his unreal athletic ability. Uh, I think that's going to make a huge difference for him later on down the road. But, you know, and to be honest, I think it's interesting that, you know, Yurcich has definitely kind of changed and molded his, his run game to uh, fit uh, his kids. And it's changed a little bit from the previous, you know, mid zone, wide zone, inside zone stuff. And he's gotten to a lot more duo, a lot more of uh, GF counter stuff. And I think it's really benefited those running backs as well. Could you explain to us what the difference is? I know you and I had the conversations about the zone reads, the inside zone, outside zone reads. Tell me more about the the changes that they made and what exactly it means. Yeah, you know, the biggest difference between like gap, um, gap scheme and zone scheme. You know, zone scheme is, for lack of better terms, it is basically – the offensive line is in charge of the gap to the play side. For example, if I'm running z- zone to the right, I am responsible for the gap to the right. I have somebody helping me, and we're going to pick up the first thing we see in that gap together until something comes to us, and then we'll separate and we'll do our we'll do our business. Gap schemes a little differently. Gap means you're in charge of a gap. Okay, so like for example, uh, GF counter. Okay, it means that that so that front side tackle he's not in charge of the gap to his right if the play's going to the right. He's actually in charge of the gap to the left. So he actually has to wash that gap down because somebody else is coming to replace him on that gap, be it a guard, a fullback, a tight end, whoever it might be. And so it's two different blocking styles. It's two different game styles. And it's really, it's uh, it's a different type of skill set, you know. And and so, you know, a lot of offensive linemen, you know, they're either good at one or the other. Um, You know, from what I can tell, Penn State's done a great job. Um, teaching their kid their gap scheme, and that's really, I think, helped these offensive linemen, and it's also helped these running backs too. So, you know, the switch from gap to uh, zone has been an improvement. In fact, I, I think I had the numbers. It was – so last year, Penn State was 57% zone and 33% gap, and now they're 46% zone and 48% gap, you know. So you know, they've definitely increased the gap performance and the way they run the game. So you mentioned about having skill sets for one style or the other and that this offensive line might be more gap scheme talent set. Is it more because of the offensive line or more because of the running backs that you think they made this kind of change? You know, I think it's probably a little bit of both. Uh, Comfort level, what they found success in. You know, a lot of teams will change who they are um, offensively, schematically, based on what they have. You know, for example – you know, I've watched the offensive line of Penn State for a few years now, right, religiously, religiously. And, you know, I feel like this is probably the most comfortable that they've been in um, since I've really been starting to really break them down. And so it's fun to watch that, that, that they're, finding this, they're finding this system, they're finding this GF counter, this duo. Um, duo is like a whole play, a concept back in the day. There's a, there's a whole – you go online and look up the difference between duo and inside zone, you'll have a thousand responses. Um, I used to have a really, really good YouTube video that got taken down with my channel back in the day that described the difference between duo and inside zone and how you can tell the difference. Um, but duo is basically power without pulling somebody. Yeah, inside zone is different. They're, they're blocked differently. They're read differently. Um, but just going back to what we're talking about, the, the duo concept has really helped, I think, this offensive line um, to kind of really get things together, come together to, to get – get penetration and I also truly believe that um, it's helped the running backs because it does allow this really really big explosive play to the outside based on what happens in the box Um, and that's where you're seeing a lot of these big gashing runs um, that bounce is because of the way the running duo. 
um, up front, I would say it's been it's been close to seven years since I can say a Penn State O-line has been dominant at the point of attack. And right now I can say that there's a reason that they're undefeated and there's a reason why they're running the ball the way they are. Um, we can talk about the freshman running backs all we want, but, man, someone's got to open those holes.